Okay, so I've been trying over the last month or so to figure out how to do distro reviews in a more interesting way because honestly, doing a distro review when a distro does a release and then just going through it and installing it and you know looking at the applications is nah, it's kind of boring. I've been toying with the idea of doing long-term reviews where I install it on my laptop and I use it for, you know, a couple months or whatever and then do a video about it. And I'm still thinking about that. That's something that I would do. If you're interested in that, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. But in the meantime, what I've decided to do to kind of spice things up is kind of steal an idea from many other Linux YouTubers and Linux podcasts and do a random distro install. So... What the plan is, is that every Tuesday, if this proves popular, is I'll go to DistroWatch, our favorite website, and hit the random distro button, and whatever distro comes up, I'll install it right there on camera. Now, there are some caveats, I guess. Uh, it has to be an actively maintained distribution. It has to be a desktop distribution. It can't be for servers, in other words. Uh, and uh, I think those are the only two that I come up with, but... I reserve the right to pass one by if it's something that I'm really, truly just not interested in. But that's what we're going to do today. It's Random Distro Tuesday. If this is something you'd like to see more of, hit the like button, leave a comment, make sure you subscribe. Let's go ahead and jump in. So here we are on our favorite website, DistroWatch. And what I'm going to do is hit the Random Distribution button up here and see which one we get. Reborn OS. So let's see here. Reborn is based on Arch, so that should be fun. Uh, it offers a GNOME desktop, according to this. It has a live medium and a desktop version, um, and it is active. Let's go ahead and see when the last re release was. We have a website here, so we should be able to go through and see if they have an active release and a website. Which they do have a website. That's a fancy website. Well, it moves around with the mouse. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. That looks a lot like Antergos, if, if I remember right. That Antergos installer looked almost like precisely like that. Uh, kernel manager, package manager, that's basically PAMAC. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Over 10 desktops. The one to rule them all, whether you are Arctana Kitty, Gnome, Deepin, Budgie, Cinnamon, Mate... Openbox, i3, XFC, Enlightenment, or Alex, Cute, or no desktop at all. Okay. Tons of optional features. Friendly community. 21609. So, yeah. Um, this is definitely actively maintained, which is because that was June, oh, not, uh, the 9th of June, which is 20 days ago. Okay. Let me go ahead and inst or download this, and then I'll be right back. Okay. Now, I've got that downloaded so what I'm going to do is create a virtual machine to install it in this should be fairly easy so we'll just do new here and we'll call this reborn OS and this is actually based on arch so we'll keep this as Linux and scroll all the way up here to arch Linux 64 bit and then we'll hit next and I will give this eight gigabytes of RAM and this is right and we'll choose the middle one here and here and we'll give this approximately 40 gigabytes now most people will tell you that 25 or 20 will be enough for a linux distro and for the most part they're right but i've come across a few linux distributions that require more than that so i'm going to go ahead and give it more in this case 46 that's just what the mouse kind of landed on and we'll go ahead and create now the next task is to give it some video memory i do this out here because it actually allows you to give you give the machine more memory out here for video than if you choose the settings and then we'll insert the optical disk drive or the ISO I mean scroll down here reborn is right here open choose okay and then the last thing what we'll want to do is go here and give it some more processing power why you can't do that from the other the main page I don't know when you can change everything else but that's okay. And now we'll just go ahead and hit start. See if this will actually boot in. And we'll let it capture the mouse and we'll hit enter. So we're installing. We're on the road, as they say.
typical ISO boot up time. So this boots into a GNOME live environment, which is fascinating. Okay. Now, yeah, this is not the Calamari's installer like I thought it was. This is actually, I think it's called Cinchi. I'm not actually sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is the exact same installer that Antigos used. So if you ever installed Antigos when it was around, this is what it looked like. So we're going to go ahead and install this. And English is right, so next. And we got ourselves some check marks. We can close this here. Next, English, US. We need to find the US one version here. And then next. And then New York is fine. Next. English US for keyboard is also fine. All right, so here's where we're going to choose our desktop environment. So I'm going to go ahead and go with something that I haven't tried in a while. Oh, let's see here. Why don't we choose... Oh, so the ones that are available, so we got Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, Gnome, i3, KDE, LXQ, Mate, Openbox, Pantheon, and XFCE. So let's go ahead and choose Budgie. I haven't used Budgie in quite a long time. So let's go ahead and use Budgie. We'll do that next. And let's see here. Let's see if I can actually move this over so it actually appears all on screen. So... Let's see, the AUR support is checked by default, which is good. Common applications perform some maintenance. I think I'm going to leave the rest of it unchecked. Uh, except for I'm going to... Yeah, I think the rest of it, I'll just leave the, all this as defaults. It selects the LTS version of the kernel by default. Uh, it doesn't install like LibreOffice or anything, but we're just going to see what they install if you leave everything else just completely unchecked. Now, there's a lot of options here for you to install stuff, you know, so that you don't have to install it like afterwards, that's really cool. Um, so like Wine and Steam and Spotify and several different browsers here. Uh, I've, I saw LibreOffice, Megasync, Google Chrome, FreeOffice. Um, so that's actually really cool. It's kind of like a, a more kind of toned down version of what Arco offers. Arco obviously offers way more options in terms of installing stuff, but we're just going to leave everything else here as default. So hit next. Okay, and we'll close. And you can use the additional device or partition as to use as package cache. In, in case you need to restart this installation, you won't be needing to re-download all the packages again. I think we'll just pass this by. Um, but that's a cool option in case the the install fails. You can save the packages to a different like drive or whatever, uh, so you don't have to re-download them. We'll let it find its own mirrors. We'll go ahead and erase. It offers encryption, LVM, uh, ZFS if you encrypt probably, and set your home in a different partition, which is also cool. So that way you don't have to do that manually. We'll just leave it like this for now. And then uh, we'll make sure we select the right drive, which seeing as how it's the only drive is fine. Uh, and then we'll enter our password and username. Matt for the name, Matt, uh, let's see, so this is reborn OS VM. Matt for username, strong and complicated password as DT would say. And then we'll hit next again. And this kind of confirms everything that we've done here. And then we'll hit next again. And then yes, and we should be on our way to installing this. See how it goes. Okay, that finally got done. That was a good 15 minutes worth of installation time. Uh, which is interesting because it downloaded a ton of stuff. And I find that surprising because the ISO was 2.4 gigabytes or so. Maybe it was 2.2, but still, it was a large ISO. So the fact that it still has to download stuff on top of that is a little surprising. It's probably just installing the most recent versions of stuff, but still, it was definitely on the longer side of uh, installations for a graphical installer. So uh, it's installed. Now what I'm going to do here is just hit no and then power this machine off because I'm going to actually have to go through and uh, remove the ISO. So we'll do this and power off and remove the ISO, and then we can start up again. Okay, we're logging into 
Reborn OS now, and I've only thing I've done since uh, I did the little cutaway was install the VirtualBox Guest Editions. That was a little bit of a task because it didn't let me install them like it normally would, so I had to install them from the terminal, and I'd never done that before, so it was a learning experience. So nothing else should have changed. This is Reborn OS with the Budgie Desktop, and this is their about pay, their about app or their welcome app, I guess you should say. So we got some documentation here. We don't need to really need that. Documentation is for other people. Uh, links is from support. Ways to contribute. And that's literally it. That's the links. And we got some utilities over here. So install on install pro programs with uh, PAMAC. We got edit repositories. Manage kernels. So there's a manage kernel thing here. Let's go ahead and click on that. Uh, let's, so that's really cool so it's kind of similar to what Manjaro does only it's a different application obviously but that's cool uh, we don't actually need to change the kernel LTS is fine for now system monitor which is Stacer but you have to install it uh, cancel we don't need to actually install it uh, bleach bit that's probably not installed either it's interesting that they put these links here but don't have them installed pre you know by default now I, I do remember back in the installation process that it had one of those little check boxes next to a thing for system maintenance that's probably what these things were you know indicating or, or it's probably what it would have installed I should say uh, for these things here so we got G parted reflector simple for doing the pack the mirrors for Pac-Man uh, hardware info and so on and so forth so that is all we got for um, the welcome app. All right, let's go ahead and go through some of the applications. So we'll start with accessories, documents. What could that possibly be? I actually don't think that's going to open up anything. Okay, interesting. Extensions. This is going to be for like GNOME extensions. Okay, so that uh, allows you to go through and uh, install GNOME extensions for the Budgie desktop, which accepts them. Uh, surprisingly, that froze interesting uh, okay so obviously haven't there we go now decided to move around we can close that go back to accessories uh, firmware hardware device measures for printing support maps which is gonna be GNOME max maps this is probably gonna be gedit yep this is gedit so that's a good little text editor uh, let's see here we got um, Weather, which is going to be GNOME Weather, Windows Surfer Control. Uh, this is going to be like a Windows Shuffler. I'm not actually sure what that is. Um, if anybody knows what that is, you can put that. You can let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm not actually sure what that is. I've never heard of that before. Um, okay, so let's go ahead. We got through accessories, through image viewer. That's probably going to be the GNOME image viewers. Photo is probably going to be shot well, shot put or whatever. It is. Shot. Um, whatever it is, that also is not going to open up anything. It's interesting that they have entry, entries in the menu for things that aren't actually installed. Um, that is interesting. Okay, so we have Firefox for our browser. Normal SSH and VNC stuff here. Office, there's nothing here. This is GNOME Calendar, GNOME Contacts. Other, this is PAMAC. Oh, wait a minute. Finally got to the Photos thing. That was a long time loading, wasn't it? I bet you that's a snap. This is GNOME Photos version 40. Uh, yeah, that was an obnoxiously long load time for something, you know, that's just a Photos application. Uh, what did I click on first that didn't actually load up anything? Documents that never loaded anything. Uh, let's see here. Programming, CMake and Icon Browser, Sound and Video. We got Cheese, Music. This is probably Rhythm Box. That was, see, that was a fairly... Uh, that was a fairly fast load time um, and I'm actually not sure what this is because it doesn't tell me but I'm the icon looks like rhythm box there's not actually an about thing there okay uh, let's see here go back to here um, pulse audio volume control sound recorder and probably get on videos there for videos system tools the, most of this stuff is fairly normal pace is f for organ oh this is, does the the um, this changes the like repositories and the mirrorless. So this is basically a GUI front end to change your pacman.conf configuration file. 
most arch users probably would never use that, but it's good for noobs. I would recommend not changing stuff in there unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Uh, universal access and utilities. This is basically going to be, be settings and stuff. So let's go ahead and see what we got in terms of memory usage here. So I should have done this beforehand. And actually what I'll do is I will go ahead and restart just so that I can get a fresh look at the memory and stuff. Because I don't want to actually give this a fair... I actually want to give this a fair shake, you know. I want to say it uses like three gigabytes of memory, but I opened up all this stuff. So we'll just restart it. It should be fairly quick. It's been a long time since I've used Budgie, so I don't know actually how much memory it usually takes. So we'll just open up the terminal here. And this here is actually GNOME Terminal, I believe. Yeah, this is GNOME Terminal. So we'll just zoom in here a little bit and do... Um, free-m so this is using 492 megs out of the box with nothing started which is very good for a gtk based distribution or desktop environment that's about half of what gnome uses so very good uh let's see what you name dash a is going to tell where you tell us we're using the lts kernel of 5.12 uh so that's really good let's see if neofetch is installed it is installed, so we have it. A um, really cool logo here. We're using uh, Bash 5.1.8. This is Budgie 10.5.3 using the Mutter Window Manager. Uh, the theme is Adaweta. This is GNOME Terminal, and it has 971 packages installed by default. That's about normal for a. Uh, Arch-based installer that you didn't actually install anything extra on. So this is probably about what you'd get if you installed something like Arco or something without adding anything extra. Uh, now, see, when I installed Arco, I actually went up to almost 2,000 packages installed, uh, but I installed a ton of window managers and stuff. So that's cool. All right, so that is Reborn OS so far. Now let's go ahead and get into the utilities. Let's look for... Now, does this come with GNOME tweaks installed out of the box? I bet you it does not. System tools, do we have budgie desktop settings? Okay, right here. So, yes, this is basically a fork version of GNOME tweaks, but for budgie. So, we should be able to change a whole bunch of stuff here. So, we should be able to change um, the dark theme and built-in theme and animations and all that stuff. So we can change the icon. So we got a ton of icon packs installed here, which is cool. Uh, we'll use Papyrus Dark, so that's the cool one. Interestingly enough, it doesn't let you change the... It, does, it just calls them widgets. I wonder why it calls it widgets. That's a weird thing to call a window. <laughs> this is not a widget. Okay, so by default, it comes with basically arc, the arc theming here. Uh, what's even, what's weirder though is you can't change back to Adaweta. And once you change it to one thing, it doesn't actually let you change it to anything else. Okay, so that is probably neat something you did. We'll go through and, um, yeah, that's interesting. Once you, probably would, would require a, like a logout or something actually to get that to go, but it did change live the first time. Why I didn't this time, I don't know. So desktop icons, so you can actually turn those things on. That's really cool. You can sing, oh, single or double click in the turn, in like a file manager, which will actually look at the file. Did we see a file manager? It has to be in like uh, system tools, right? Uh, utilities? Okay, so we're looking for a file manager here. Let's see if we can type in files. Yeah, here we go. This is going to be Nautilus. Yeah, okay. And that actually did file, follow the brand new theme that we chose. So, yeah. Interestingly enough, I don't know what category they put files in. Other, maybe? Uh, programming, sound and video, system tools, files isn't here. Universal access is not there. Utilities is not there either. Accessories? Okay, so your file manager is in the accessories category. Weird. That is 
that is weird. Um, cause I wouldn't really consider that an accessory. I would consider that a like a utility or something like that. That's weird. Okay, let's see. You can change the fonts from here. Raven is this thing over here, uh, which is something that uh, I don't. When I re when I use Budgie, I never actually use this. But this isn't for notifications and applets. Now these things would be considered widgets. Uh, let's see. This allows you to change the things for Windows. Like it had, it allows you to, to uh, change where the w windows are spawned. Enable window focus on mouse. Enter leave. So that's really cool if you're used to that functionality, like in a window manager or something. Uh, let's see. And then you can manage your panels here as well. So and then auto surf. Uh, application so that is the budgie settings that's really all you get what if I wanted to change like a the dis dis display nothing there okay uh, what about like re regular settings can I get those from like up here or something okay like where's like the regular settings like utilities system monitor screenshot password tools logs fonts document viewer disk usage generators disks which is going to be in gnome disks archive manager system tools um reborn uh, accessories again <laughs> uh interestingly enough i don't see any i think Um, add or move saucers, arch, arch, Linux kernel manager for scanning, light DM greetings manager, onboard settings, preview control, print settings, QT5 settings. Ah, here we go, right here. It's in other. That is, <laughs> why isn't it in the settings category? I mean, there is a, our utilities category, I guess. Uh, system tools, one of those, but it's in other. Okay, now this is just the GNOME settings panel, I guess. Uh, so there's nothing going to be a lot new here. But at least it does exist. <laughs> it took me a while to find it because it was in other. That's really weird. Um, but it's there. Okay, so let's see. The online counts is just, this just is going to be your standard uh, GNOME settings panel. There's nothing here. Let's go ahead and see if there's any cool wallpapers here. So it comes with a few wallpapers. We, these look like the standard like GNOME wallpapers, actually. Um, there are a couple extra ones here, but there's nothing here specific for Reborn. It doesn't look like. Like this is the standard like uh, wallpaper you'd get with Fedora, but it won't actually change to it. Like that one there won't change to it. I don't know what that is. Like that must be like a slideshow or something. I don't know. Um, it will change to this one. So. In terms of wallpaper selection, not great, but it's not the worst ever because I've seen some of them that only include one wallpaper. So that is Reborn OS. The installation took a long time, and for the little amount of software that's actually here out of the box, I don't know why. Uh, it's possible that the mirrors are a little off. That's possible because Reflector sometimes doesn't always grab the best mirrors and it probably uses Reflector to, in order to actually choose the mirrors that you're on. Uh, but then the installation took a long time for not a lot of applications. Uh, the, the customizability of like the kernel and your um, repositories and stuff, that's really cool. The categorization of the apps is really weird. So putting files in the accessories category and your settings in the other category, that's also very odd and it took a long time to find those things because that's not really where you'd expect those things to be now i understand i could have searched for them but i wanted to find them in the menu system in terms of design it's budgie uh it's not going to be anything that's different if you've ever used budgie before and it offers the same kind of customization you'd expect from budgie it's a look it's basically gnome but with more customization on top of it and a better menu i think uh so uh, Budgie is really good if you if you like GNOME but would like a little bit more customization out of the box without actually having to go through and install GNOME tweaks. Budgie is probably a good option for you. Overall, it's an arts-based distro, so you could pretty much do whatever you wanted with it out of the box uh, if you understand how to use Pac-Man and the AUR. So uh, it's really it's a good distro. Uh, I haven't used it obviously that much, and so I can't tell you a lot about stability or anything, but. Uh, I enjoyed my time with it so far, and I'll probably play around with it for a little while longer. 
uh, I'm not so sure about the whole installation process because, like I said, I've seen faster installations out there. So if that's something that you're thinking about, keep that in mind. Okay, so that is it for this video. If you enjoyed the randomness of this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, give it a subscribe, uh, do all that kind of stuff. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons, Devon Marcus, Meglin, Donnie Sven, East Coast Web, Mitchell, who has upped his contribution uh, to co-producer level. Thank you. Uh, Merrick, Campham, and Chris, thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.